Hello, hello, good afternoon or good morning too, depending on where you are. Hope you're well. I'm really excited for today's session to share with you some of what I've been discovering on this awesome AI that we now have at our fingertips, saving us so much time uh, and uh, yeah, better for us to be able to do things on uh, much quicker than we ever have done before. So before we get stuck in, let me know if you're here. Let me know that you can hear and see me okay. Post a comment down below in the comment section of whichever platform you are watching this on. Are you on Facebook? Are you on YouTube? Let me know down below that you are here. You can see me okay. Everything is coming through and we will get cracking up very shortly. Let me know where you're based as well. Let me know where you're tuning in from today. What are you most excited about learning from today's session? Have you been checking out ChatGPT already? Have you been experimenting with it? Have you tried it out? What have you got it to do? Let me know in the comments below and we will get started very shortly. So post a comment. Let me know where you are. If you're watching on replay, let me know where you are based, where you are dialing in from. And as we go through this session, I'll be showing you a lot, but also at the same time, use the comments to ask me any questions that you have. And if I can't answer them on today's session, I will come back to you afterwards once I go through the comments after the section. So who do we have? Fantastic. We've got a few of you. We've got Roger here. Hey, Roger, how you doing? Good to see you. We've got a Facebook user as well. If you're watching on Facebook, you've just got to allow Facebook to or StreamYard the permissions to see your name so that your name comes up on the screen rather than Facebook user, which is what you see or what you will see or what I see when it comes through if you haven't allowed StreamYard for the permissions. Hey, Michael, good to see you here. You're on a Facebook as well. If I'm ducking, I'm just trying to get through my webcam, which is right in front of me. So I'm ducking and diving to see the comments behind me, which is in my middle screen in front of me. I've got three screens here open at the moment. Um, yeah, a bit of a bit of an automation robotics factory, it seems, where I am today. Amar, good to see you. Hey, Amar, you're on YouTube, I think. Hinel, good to see you here. Things that people do not expect in my accountant. <laughs> I always forget who that is. It's a cracking name, whoever you are. I do reveal your true name. Uh, on uh, on YouTube, things that people do not expect of an accountant. Danny is here. Good to see you, Danny, as well. Who else is here? Comment, uh, put a comment below. Let me know that you are here. Where are you dialing in from today? Hey, Zainab. Hey, Danny. Good to see you. Hey, Keith. Good to see you as well. You have subscribed to J Chat GPT already from Basing Stoke so far. Just playing with it. Okay. Hopefully, I'll give you so a few more ideas and share with you how I've been using it as well. Give some tips and tricks to help you save time and embrace the power of AI. Right. So I've got some slides, and um, that was just kind of a. Uh, talk us through. That will be an intro into what we're going to go through today. My computer's lagging a bit. Maybe I've got too many things open at the moment, so bear with me whilst it uh, figures out that I want to share this thing now because it's kind of, kind of frozen on me at the moment, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> which is not great when you want to do a demo like this. And now it's gone completely blank. So, oh, it's coming back to me. It's coming back. It's coming back. Fantastic. Maybe I should close a few more uh, things down because it can't seem to handle so much at the same time. So here we are. ChatGPT and Code Interpreter. Code Interpreter is this new release which only came out a couple of weeks ago and is an absolute game changer. I'll talk you through some of the use cases as to how I've been using it, how I've been testing it, but it really is a game changer, particularly for us when it comes to data analysis. You essentially have access to now a junior data analysis. Imagine have, having access to a completely free member in your team who can take information from zero, from QuickBooks, and create charts and graphs literally within seconds. So you can then take that information and present it to a client, talk to a client about what's happening in their business, using some visuals to help them understand what's going on. It's absolutely fantastic. Fantastic, and I'll show you some use cases in a second. So let's get uh, let's get stuck straight in, and the clock is ticking. So what can it help us with today? Right, okay. So hopefully you can see my screen. What can it help us with? So here are just some of the ideas, some of the things that I've been playing around with at the moment as to uh, the power of of ChatGPT, and what can it help with? Well, firstly, it can help with marketing. 
So if you've been struggling and not being able to find time with the stuff that you know you need to do when it comes to marketing, you know, writing those blog content, posting on social media, getting that ebook done, well, now you have no excuse. And now you have a superpower at your fingertips that is called ChatGPT because it can help you with all of that. And I'll show you how you can do some of the blog writing, how you can get your website copy written, how you can get it to write LinkedIn posts for you and how you can get it to sound like you rather than it sound like a robot as well. So it's a great tool to be help you with your marketing. Yes, you still need to know why you're doing what you're doing, but as long as you give it the right prompts and you learn the skill of prompt engineering, that is the one thing I wanna get across to you today, that don't put this off and don't wait for it to be fixed and get to a point where now let everybody else try it out and then I'll come onto it later when it's all figured out. It already knows how to do so much. It's already got all the knowledge out there that anyone has ever put on the internet in the last 20 years of the internet being in existence. So it's a hugely powerful tool. We need to develop that skill of prompt engineering. And that is the skill of the century. So that is the one thing that you need to get uh, better at. And it's the one thing that I tell you to get your kids onto as well, because that is that is the superpower that they will have as well as they uh, grow into this world. And if they can, if they can, uh, uh, get on top of that and they can master that skill of prompt engineering, then they will definitely go far in life. So what I was going to help with tax advisory. Yes, absolutely. Now, obviously take it with a pinch of salt, but you know, I've tried this a couple of times and albeit it's knowledge is limited to a certain point in time, because at the moment, all it, it's going off information up until September, 2021, it did release a, an update where it was able to scour the web for up-to-date information through Bing, which it had up until about a couple of weeks ago, but they have closed down that feature for now before because of some legal ramifications. It turned out that you were able to kind of get through paywalls and get into subscriptions like, you know, the Times newspaper and The Economist and things like that through ChatGPT, which obviously had legal ramifications for ChatGPT and therefore they had to close that feature down for now, but they are working on it in the background and I'm sure they're going to figure out a solution. So before long, it will have access to everything that you need to ask it when it comes to tax questions. And just think about its power at the moment. Even, even, if, even if we don't have to wait until then now, at the moment, if you have access to a PDF copy of Tolly's tax legislation and a big chunky books that we used to get in our studies, you can upload that into ChatGPT and then ask it questions there from. It has access to HMRC manuals and all that kind of stuff up until September, 2021. So if you're asking it any questions to do with tax that you know have been around before 2021, then you're okay. You're all good. And the stuff it generates is probably going to be pretty accurate because it's got everything that it needs to know up to September 2021. And I'll show you some of the things that I've used to find answers for. Communications. So email writing, it's fantastic. If you have a mental block when you are having to write an advisory email for a client, it can help you there. It can draft it for you. Just some simple prompts for you. And the beauty about ChatGPT is it's non-judgmental. It won't, it won't tell you off about your spelling mistakes. It won't say that you need to give me instructions in a certain way. You can just tell it what you like in your own words without any formatting, without any niceties, without any, you know, even please and thank yous you don't have to use if you don't want to. Just simple words to say, I'm thinking about, I need to write this, or even this is the email that I have got from a client. Can you draft me a response, please? And it would generate a first draft for you, which is much better than starting from scratch. What else can we do? Process notes. So yeah, if you've been on the, uh, you're a member in my PAC community, you know I talk a lot about building systems, building process notes and things like that. But it's one of those important, non-urgent things that we never get around to. Well, it can help you with that. It can help you to draft process notes as well, which are really important in order to build those consistent standards that your team can follow about getting the information out of your head and out of your team's head and sharing that effectively between your team members. That's how you generate efficiency. That's how you deliver that consistent quality of service to your clients. Hey, Wendy, hey, Alan, good to see you here as well. What else can I do? Job descriptions. You know, it can put together a an employment contract for you. It can put together um, uh, performance reviews. It can put together emails that, you know, you want to, you've got a difficult conversation coming up with a team member because of lack of performance. It can help you with that. It can put together job adverts for you as well. 
pricing, that wonderful topic of pricing, which you heard hear from me a, a lot and I talk about a lot. It can help you with repricing conversations or repricing emails for clients. It can draft them for you. If a client comes back to you by email and you don't really know what to say, obviously I'd recommend pick the phone up, have a meeting with them. But if you wanted to draft a response, it can help you with that as well. It can do role play. So if you're dreading a price conversation with a client, for example, and you're worried about what the client may say, and this, which is one of the main fears that many of us have in our minds, that we don't carry out these pricing conversations because we're worried about what clients may say, then you can, you can tell ChatGPT to act as your client and do a role play with it. You say, I'm, a, I'm an accountant, you are my client, I have a difficult pricing conversation that I am about to have with you. I want you to act, engage in a role play with me to train me and give me some confidence before my meeting. And it will do that for you. It will it will, it will role play with you. You can ask it questions. It will ask, answer you questions back and you can tell it to act as a, you know, as a client who isn't happy with receiving the price increase. So you can see what kind of words are coming back, what kind of things to expect. And if you know what to expect, if you're for, for, for armed, then you can be forewarned in terms of what to expect when going into that meeting. You can train yourself better. You can build yourself and psych yourself up as to what to expect because you know what's coming and you can train yourself that, okay, fine. Well, if they say that, then I know what to say. And ChatGPT can help you with that and engage in that role play exercise with you. Essentially, and it was to have your own coach with you at hand. Business Advisory. And that is the one thing which the code interpreter, which I will show you, is revolutionary when it comes to actually delivering business advisory, being able to create those charts and graphs for clients to have those meaningful conversations, which we're going to get onto very soon. You're probably dying for me to get into it. Uh, what else do we have to show you? Let me just get through the few slides. You know what is coming and then we'll get into ChatGPT. I apologize. My computer is being very slow. It's uh, too many things going on for it to handle. What slide were we on? We're on slide four. So here's some golden rules when it comes to chat GPT to get the best possible results. Number one, the output is only as good as the input. You've probably heard that before. Rubbish in, rub it out, rubbish out. Applies to many things in life, which is why we need to get better at the skill of prompt engineering, because the better the prompts we get it, the better the output we will get. So we learn prompt engineering. We need to fear it and embrace it. Don't fear it, embrace it. You know, don't think about, oh, with, there are people out there who think, oh, it's going to take away all the jobs and take away our, you know, our, our usefulness. It's absolutely not. We are still going to be in business. Clients are still going to want to talk to an individual and put trust in us in order to be able to hand over the obligation and responsibility of managing their accounting and tax affairs to a professional, that is never going to change. But what is going to change is our ability to do things much more efficiently than ever before. So if you get your pricing and positioning right, you can still charge the same premium amounts. But if you can get more efficient at what you do by using automation technology, so this is just something else to add to your app stack, but software stack, but even better than anything you've ever seen, is going to help you do things a lot more efficiently, save you time, which means you've got more time to either spend on yourself or more time to do the things that actually move the needle forward in your business. So see it as an absolute opportunity rather than the fear mongering and the kind of the scarcity mindset uh, that many people have when it comes to new things and things coming uh, in the world and get your team on it, get your team to start using it, get your team to, uh, you know, use it to help them as well, because that's going to help with their efficiency. That's going to help them save, save time as well. So they can do more meaningful stuff and they don't get stuck doing, uh, um, you know, they're stuck for answers or waiting for answers or trying to figure things out or scroll the web for answers. Use chat as as a first port of call. At the moment you have a question, ask ChatGPT, and it will direct you in the right way so long as you get better at prompting. The better the prompt, the better the output. So get better at the prompting, which I'll show you, give you some tips as to how to, and let that be your first port of call. So before long, you know, we're, rather than doing a Google search and having to go through every single article or, or trawl through the revenue manuals, for example, for answers, ask ChatGPT, and it can direct you to the right manual to look at to verify what you get from ChatGPT. That is the power of this tool, that you can talk to it like another human being. It's an open language model that whatever you say to it in plain English, it will give you the answer that uh, is most uh, relevant for the question that you are asking. 
Good, good. What is next? Okay, slide number five is all about, again, the technology is uh, is playing up on me, but well, we'll get there eventually. How to get the best results. Okay, this is how you get the best results when it comes to prompting, when it comes to prompt engineering. Give it a roll. What we want to do is, this is the first thing, because at the moment, if you just type in a question to say, you know, create my LinkedIn post on on the expenses that you can claim uh, as a business owner. And it's going to give you something very generic. It's not going to know that you are a UK accountant and therefore you're only interested in uh, UK tax laws. So what you want it to do is to give it a role, e.g. you are a, an expert tax advisor in the UK. You're giving it a role. And then the next thing you want to do is provide context. So what is it? Who are you? And what do you want it for? So you are, so you're telling it you are a, tax expert in the UK. You are a, an expert tax advisor in the UK. I want you, I am a, I'm an accountant and I am looking for an email to explain to my client the benefits of buying a car through the company, for example. And then what you wanted to do is to give it uh, an indication of what you're looking for as an output. So what kind of style are you <laughs> Am I back now? Apologies for that. Yeah, <laughs> I disappeared. Am I back now? Let me know in the comments that I'm back. Uh, clearly, it can't take it. ChatGPT has taken over. Somebody said there. Absolutely. This is the worry, isn't it? That we can't, the, the, tech, we, the, the, the actual hardware can't keep up with the software these days. Uh, but just because I've got Chrome running and I've got a couple of other pieces of software running and the live stream running, it appears that my... Uh, yeah, my desktop can't cope, so I'm going to have to get a major upgrade because of everything that uh, I is going on. Okay, apologies for that. I'm fantastic. Uh, thank you, Danny, for letting me know where I am so I can pick up for where I left off. Let me get back those uh, slides. Where were we? I think we were on slide four. Okay, that seems a lot better now, a lot more um, robust. So the RCSS prompt formula. And what the prompt formula is, so just going back over what we just said, you want to give it a role. So what do you want it to act as? You want to give it some context. So who are you and what do you want the output for? Is it just for you to know or is it an email to a client or is it a table? Is it a blog post? What is it that you want it to generate for you? The style that you want. So do you want it in an informal style? Do you want it in a formal style? Are you writing to HMRC and therefore you do want it in a formal style? Are you writing to a client, in which case you might want it in a more informal style? Are you writing to a team member, in which case you'd want it in your style? So what? tell it the style that you want. And the more specific you are, the better. So if you want it to draft a social media post for you, rather than saying social media post, tell it LinkedIn post or Instagram post, because then it will know there are certain nuances to do with drafting social media posts on each platform. And each platform has its nuances. So automatically, if you tell it that you are a social media consultant expert, and I want you to draft me a LinkedIn post on this, for example, on this topic, then it will then give you something that is uh, most uh, relevant and suitable for that platform. So for example, on LinkedIn, you know, uh, you'd only have the three to five hashtags as kind of best practice. Whereas on Instagram, you have a lot more hashtags, for example. Um, so things like that, you know, to be aware of the more specific you are, the better output that you are going to get. Okay, moving on to uh, the next bit, which is when it finally, okay, we skipped one there. Uh, marketing, I think we talked about marketing. I'll, I'll show you some real life examples in a second on that. 
but yeah, marketing, you know, it can do blog posts, it can do content generation, data analysis. This is the most exciting one, which I'm going to show you how you can create charts and graphs just from simple prompts, taking stuff from zero, taking reports from zero, dumping it into chat GBT and saying, analyze this for me. And you'll be amazed at what it comes out at. Hopefully the bandwidth will be strong enough for me to show you how it works. Um, it can give you some comparison. So for example, when you are reviewing uh, software, say you're looking into some practice management software, or you're looking into uh, a software that does streaming, or maybe not for you streaming, but what, 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 um, what else could there be? You're looking into some software for document management, for example, or even screen capture to say, you know, give me, give me a table summary of the top five pieces of software when it comes to document management and give me the pros and cons in each. And it will give you a nice little table, pros and cons of each. And that just helps to shortcut your process, your your time of having to scroll through lots of articles, lots of, lots of Facebook group material, et cetera. It just gives you the best things of anything that anyone said over these five software. And again, the more specific you are, the better. So if it's something that is specifically for accountants, mention that in your prompt. So it gives you something relevant to what you are looking for. That's another idea. Uh, what else is there before we get into chat GPT? It is coming. It is coming. Hang in there. Learning and productivity. So uh, it's a great way for you to learn fast. So if you're not really a reader, but you keep hearing from me and from others to say, this is a great book, you must read it, then what you can do now is you can ask ChatGPT for a summary, if you prefer to read of your, you know, a book that's been recommended to you, or even if you wanted to have a summary of the book before you decided to buy it, ask it for a summary of Atomic Habits, for example, which is, which is amazing because there are tools available right now that do this, which are paid tools. So I have subscribed in the past to things like Blinkist, which basically reads you out. It's a 20 minute kind of podcast style, but it reads you the summary of a book. So rather than you having to go through the whole audio book, which gives you a flavor of the book. And then if uh, it is something that resonates, then you can go out and buy it or buy the audiobook, for example. But it's essentially replacing that with a free tool that we are now have access to through ChatGPT. So great for learning and role play. You can even tell it now to uh, to upload your copy of the four pillars, which I'm sure you have at the moment, uh, which you, I'm sure you have by now. If not, you know what to do. Go to my LinkedIn profile, grab a copy of the four pillars if you don't have it already. But essentially, you can you can upload the four pillars and then you can ask questions. So you can you have access to me as your personal coach by uploading my book to ChatGPT and asking questions around. OK, so, you know, according to, to the four pillars or you don't need to say that you've uploaded the book. So according to the above, so according to what Reza would say, you know, what how do I build a pricing system or what is the best way to win new clients or, you know, how do I get the best out of my people? And it will give you answers from the piece of content that you have given it, i.e. access to my book, which it will read within seconds for you, and then generate the bits of information that you need when you need it. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. Okay, what is next? I think we're the last one, surely, by now, before we get stuck in. Let me know in the comments, What's what's what ideas are are brimming in your head at the moment based on what we've gone through so far. I'd love to hear, put it in the comments below. In summary, embrace it. Don't fear it. Learn the skill of prompt engineering. And the more you train it, the better you will get. Okay, right. We're going to get into it right now. So I'm going to present my screen and show you a few examples, something that you've all been waiting for. I'm pretty sure, again, my uh, desktop is not playing a ball. So just bear with me. But in the meantime, let me know. Well, let me know any, if you've got any questions. What is brewing in your head at the moment as to what you could possibly do with it? I would love it to hear, and hopefully, I'll get on to some of your questions uh, in a second. Okay, AI is in control. Can someone just put a question in so I can see that it's coming up? Uh, <laughs> fantastic. Yes, Jill, wondering how quickly I can scan in all my books. Will it take over tax consultancy? Absolutely not. But what it will do, because now I believe your your clients will will and, and it's the case at the moment, you know, there is information's already out there. HMRC manuals are already out there. If a client wants access to tollies, that's already out there. But they don't have the training and the experience to apply what is out there to their particular situation. So you we will never be out of business, right? We'll never be out of business. Providing you got your positioning right, you know, that's a, a separate topic for, for another day. But it's about, this is about helping you to get answers quicker 
because at the moment we use things like helplines, tax helplines, we spend time to craft those emails for clients, to craft emails that we think would be valuable to clients. Like for example, you know, doing proactive stuff, like how do we extract funds out of the pro uh, out of our companies most tax efficiently? What are the most common um, tax breaks that you can claim? What are the most common expenses that you can claim? Things like that it can do for you. You know, my client had just become VAT registered, having exceeded the threshold. Of, and uh, so, you know, draft me an email explaining now the responsibilities of being VAT registered for my client. And boom, within seconds, it's done for you. So it helps you to be proactive. So you know you need to do these things, but it's on your to-do list. You never quite get round of it because something's always more pressing, more urgent. Now, ChatGPT is your best friend. It's your best employee. It works 24-7. It doesn't grumble. It doesn't take holidays. It doesn't take sick pay. It's available for you. It's always nice. It never has any issues. It is going to be your best, you know, one of your best team members anyway, for you to access and help and use it to help you to uh, provide a better service for your clients. Okay, uh, oh, this is really being annoying. Okay, that's removed of that. That's gone back again. So I'm gonna press the button to present my screen. Let me know when you can see it. How do you upload documents to GPT? I thought it was just text-based uploads. That's exactly what I'm gonna show you if I can get my if I can get the streaming uh, software to work. So bear with me, let me know in the, uh, it's not ended yet, is it? Can you still see me? Can you still hear me? I hope so. It's decided to upload a recording for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that, but it's really annoying. So I just want to present my screen now. This is the main event and it is not playing ball with me. So in the meantime, let me know. I want to hear your, I want to hear your questions in the comments. I want to hear what ideas are going through your head at the moment. I can still see them on my laptop, which is uh, looking at the live uh, YouTube stream. So I can see those coming through. The actual software that I'm using to streaming has jammed on me. So just bear with me until I try and uh, get that back because it's not playing ball at the moment. Okay, present. I think next time I'm not going to use this. And this was supposed to be a members only session, but I thought, let me extend it to the wider Facebook community. And therefore I'm using this streaming software, which isn't as robust and stable as Zoom, which is what I normally use. So I'll probably revert back to using Zoom. And then if, uh, yeah, for the appropriate ones, I might uh, upload those videos later on because clearly not a great platform to be able to share with you screens and things like that, because it doesn't seem to be able to hack it at the moment. But the one thing that we really wanted to do was to share my screen so I can show you some real life examples, but it is uh, not playing board at the moment. Maybe it was because of the recording, but let me know in uh, what other questions do you have? What other ideas are going through your head in the, put that in the comments right now so I can see that whilst I wait for this to come back. Uh, what I might do is I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave, I'm going to come back. So hopefully it's not going to end the broadcast, but it might, uh, might help to just rejig things and um, get me back to you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Should we reconsider? <laughs> Everybody's saying, should we reconsider? Ah, okay. So it's it's coming back, but it's coming back very slowly. And I know the anticipation is unbearable, isn't it? You need to know. You want to know what has been doing. And the technology isn't playing ball. But it is coming. It is coming. Just bear with me. Hopefully, I can get it to work. Uh, apologies for this. It is highly annoying. I know it's annoying for you. If I was sitting on the other side, I'd find it annoying as well. But lesson learned, right? You just got to do these things. It was something that I thought I'd do to help and to share with you what I'm doing. But unfortunately, the tech isn't playing ball at the moment. And you can't really test these live stream thingies because there's one thing doing it when it's not live streaming, but there's another thing, all a ball, ball game altogether when you're actually live streaming the thing. You can't really ever do a test live. That is the problem. Okay, what I want to do is share my screen, for goodness sake. And it's so difficult to do that. So, Mark.
Am I back? Hello, hello. Am I back? Can you hear? See me okay? <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being so understanding. Really appreciate your patience here today. So I'm going to now, I've taken off the slides, and I'm going to share my screen. Let me know when you can see my screen. You can see my chat GPT screen. Let me know if you can if you can see it. So the first person to say I can see it, and then I will start. Ricky Singh, thank you for telling me I'm back. Julian, thank you. I'm back. Hamza says I'm back. So can you see my chat GPT screen? Somebody say yes, you can, and then I'll show you some cool things, which hopefully will give you some ideas. Fantastic. Good stuff. Okay, let's get let's get on it because this is what you've been waiting for. Cool. So the first thing I want to show you is what it can do for marketing purposes. So the other day, what I did was I spent about five or 10 minutes playing with it and it got it to create me a brand new name for an accounting firm for dentists. I just came up with a random niche for dentists. And off the back of that, I then created me a one page website for it. And this is how we did it. Okay. So this is, I'll show you my, uh, which one is it? It's somewhere over here. Oh, again, uh, technology, hey? Okay. I'm clicking on the chat, but I'm guessing you can't see any of it, can you? Okay, so for example, the first thing I did was, right, so I took a lot about niching it down and specializing into one particular sector. You might not know which one that is, or you might then choose a niche, for example, uh, but then have to come up with names. ChatGPT can help you with that. So it's great for idea generation. You've got an idea, pop it into ChatGPT, just like I did here. Again, remember the golden rule, the RCSS, give it a role, give it some context and give it the style that you want if you're relevant and give it some specificity. So what I said here was, you are a, an apology if it's a bit too small. Is it too small for you to see or are you okay with uh, with seeing that? I can make it, I can try and make it full screen, but maybe not. Uh, play around with it too much because then you might not see, uh, <laughs> don't want to disappear again. So you're an expert marketing consultant. I'm an accounting firm only in the UK. So again, I'm giving it context. I'm an accounting firm owner in the UK. I've decided to niche into working with dentists. Can you give me some ideas for a new name? And then it comes up with quite a few. It even goes a bit a bit further and it says what I need to do when choosing a name. You know, it's very, it's very good like that. Very proactive. You know, we 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 try it's 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 really the best employee you'll ever have. You know, <laughs> we, we try and get our employees to be proactive, um, which can be hit or miss sometimes, but with chat GPT, it will always be proactive even if you don't tell it to. So it's fantastic, you know, it'll tell you some extra things that you don't really need to do. It knows my writing style. So I then suggested to it, can you create a LinkedIn post in the style of me? I am Reza Huda, use an informal style, line spacing between each sentence and emojis, and look what it does. It then creates, I have given it no more context, apart from the fact that I'm a UK accounting firm owner that uh, has decided to specialize in dentists. And what it's done, it's gone away and perhaps found some, some of my uh, blog content that I've written to, to capture my writing style, and it has created a, long, a LinkedIn post for it. Now, it's okay. It's not kind of in my writing style. There are, uh, I would probably play with that and I'd give it some more examples of my writing style. And the way I would do this would say, here is, uh, here are some examples of my writing style. I'm going to paste them in for you. Can you have a read of them? And then tell me you understand before I give you more instructions. So it's just about, you know, giving it things step by step to ensure, because sometimes it forgets things, sometimes it misses things. So to make sure that it has understood what you want it to do, give it in bite-sized chunks. And at the moment, uh, RR is asking, is it the paid version, GPT-4? I do have the paid version, but this one in particular was done on the free version, chat GPT-3.5. Okay, that's one example. And then what I asked it to do was to actually create me a one-page website. Now, this is this is powerful stuff. I think, was it over here? Yeah, it was. Okay, so I said, first, give me some names. Now, this I did on GPT-4. I just find GPT-4, although you can do this, you can do this on GPT-3.5, which is the free version. Uh, I, you, I find that you do get better answers on GPT-4, obviously, because it's, um, it's, it's more powerful. It's got you know, more stuff in it that it can uh, uh, extract. So I do find it is a lot better. And I tested this out with 3.5 and 4. It's only $20 a month. It's well worth it. You will more than make your money back by using this. And I'll just show you how. So we, we found a name. Uh, I told it I like Bright Smile Financials. Now I went, I, we need to create copy for a one-page website. Use the story brand framework from the book, building a story brand to come up with a copy for the website. So this I know, and this I teach in the 
in the membership of my program that about on power positioning as well. And some of what I've learned from marketing has come from the book, building a story brand and creating a one page website. So what we can do now is we can tap into existing knowledge out there, existing frameworks, existing styles, existing authors that have written stuff and essentially tell it to create you something based upon what somebody else has created in terms of their framework. So in this, I know that within building a story brand, there is a framework of how to create a one-page website. So that's exactly what I told it to do in, in one sentence. And it, and it picked it up. Certainly, Donald, Miller, Donald Miller's storing a brand framework focuses on clarifying your message so customers will listen. The framework revolves around the seven elements of a story. I'll break down each element and provide copy for the Bright Smile Financials one-page website based on it. So then it comes out with, okay, these are all the, all the things that are part of the framework, the character, the problem. Uh, you know, you have a character who has a problem, who meets a guide, uh, who gives them a plan, and that ends in success, uh, the benefits they get. And underneath each of those, it's put a one-liner that will make up the website copy. So this is what it came out with, full one-page website copy, and it did that. Now, okay, it, that's not great, right? That's that's not enough for the full one-page website. But the beauty of this is you don't take the first thing that it gives you, and you can tell it this is the, what you want after that. So... This is what I told it. It says, this is a streamlined copy based on the story brand framework. Ensure your webpage has easy navigation, clear calls to action, uh, like buttons for the consultation and perhaps some high quality images of both dental practices and financial tools to blend the two themes together visually. I said, I'm not happy with this. Let's break it down. I didn't say I'm not happy. So let's break it down. Start with a one liner that will go under the brand name. So I know the framework and this is something I teach. What you want on your website is you want to have, you know, accountants for dentists, and then you have a one liner underneath that shows the prospect that they're in the right place. It just that mental shortcut that, oh, yes, these guys understand me. They understand where I am and understand my challenges. So it says, of course, the one liner should encapsulate the essence of your brand in a succinct manner. And it came up with this streamlining dental finances to let you focus on smiles, not spreadsheet. OK, that's not bad. Um, and uh, but the thing is, it. The statement succinctly conveys what you do and the benefit you provide. But what it didn't do, which I know the story from brand framework teaches, is provide the problem. So the actual framework is problem, solution, result for the one liner. So I told it, you haven't included the problem, problem, solution, result. And it says, no, it's very, it's very apologetic. Apologies for missing that detail. Let's craft a one liner using the problem, solution, result framework. So this is the problem. Dental practices lost in financial complexity. The solution is bright small financials, us managing the numbers. Result, dentists can only focus on patient care. The one-liner then becomes transforming financial complexity into clarity so dentists can focus on what truly matters, patient smiles. Okay, it's not bad. We could have then, if you didn't like that, you could ask it to give you an alternative to say, give me three more options and it would have done it for you. You could have specified what the problem actually is if you know your audience and it would then craft it based upon the problems that you already know. So I said, okay, we know that now. Let's move on to the next part of the website. Introduce the problem. Uh, and it says, he agrees. Introducing the problem effectively on your website will help potential clients recognize their own challenges and resonate with your message. So it comes up with a problem sex text. Um, I wasn't happy with this because it used a lot of uh, Americanized English. And clearly we're based in the UK, so we have a slightly different terminology. So I told it, the language is very Americanized. Use British English and make it more informal without using so many flowery words to make it relatable. So, you know, I don't want to speak in flowery terminology. I want to speak to a you know, human being. You know, we are very in, in an informal way because that's how you make a connection better rather than being very corporate -y. So it says, understood, let's simplify the language and ensure it's tailored to a British audience whilst keeping it informal. So then it comes up with this, the money headache. Running a dental practice is not just about teeth. Once the last patient leaves, there's a whole bit of money to, money bit to sort out. And it's a bit of a pain, isn't it? And then it's got bullet points, confusing accounts. All, all those numbers, invoices, and pay slips can become a right mess. Tax hassles. With tax rules changing all the time, it's hard to know if you're ticking the right boxes or if you're missing out on some savings. Time eater. Every minute spent wrestling with finances is a minute of not doing what you love or simply having a breather. That's not bad because it gets straight into the problems that, and frustrations that your target audience would be having. So it's done a pretty good job with that. And then it's coming up with sound familiar. Apologies, it's crashed on me again. Oh, this is annoying. <laughs> How is that at the moment? You know, we, this, the whole one-page website made literally in minutes. Isn't that phenomenal? 
Let me know if this is something that you are going to be using. Is it something that would be helpful, do you think? What have I said so far that has got your brain thinking about what you're going to do, how you are going to use it to help you save time, to help you come up with content, for example, to help you come up with copy for your website? What are you going to do based on what you've heard so far? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jillian says, yep, absolutely. You need to ask ChatBT how to improve your system. Absolutely. What's my IT guy? Yeah, it's the live stream that's putting it off uh, annoyingly. We'll do, definitely do this on Zoom next time, and then I'll just upload it to YouTube um, because it's it's completely crashed on me again. This is really annoying. I've got so much more to show you. But let me know. Let me know in the in the chat box. Let's get the conversation going because hopefully you can still hear me. If you can hear me, then I'm happy to talk. I'm happy to answer questions whilst uh, it's... Uh, slowly gets round to hopefully coming back at some point in time. I'm already using ChatGPT for letters and elevator pitches and networking, says Liz. Fantastic. That's great. Has anyone used Code Interpreter yet? Well, that's the thing I'm going to show you next. That is the game changer if you use Code Interpreter. Have you used that? Okay, right. So it's refreshing slowly for me. So hopefully you should be back in a second. The system can't handle the amount of value you're providing. <laughs> love it. Love it, RR. Technical difficulties difficulties happen to everyone. It was bound to happen eventually. Yes, here you find, but really hard to see your screen. Yeah, apologies for that, Tim. Uh, don't worry. You are, all members will get access to the prompts that I've used. I'll also copy, what I can do is actually copy the, the whole chat and paste that as a link. So in the members area, I've created a separate section for chat GPT prompts, and I'll be putting everything that I've shared with you, including the full copy of the chats that I've had with GPT. So how I have prompted it, what I've used, and the output is generated. I'll put that in the members section on Notion so you can access it anytime. So if you're a member of the pack, do not worry. You will get access to it in the members section. If you're not, you know what to do. Come join the pack, right? <laughs> Okie dokie. All right. So our screen's gone blank. Uh, annoying. Come back. Come back. Okay, let's try this. Let me open up another tab and see if that works. Maybe it's just Chrome. Chrome takes up a hell of a lot of resource, doesn't it? It's a, it takes up a, an immense amount of bandwidth. Roger Farrell says, yep, I signed up for ChatGPT4. Absolutely incredible content generation. Definitely. Ten bridge accountants is Wendy, isn't it? Really hard to see this text, but I can hear you. Fantastic. Can I can I can I see the YouTube again? Says somebody. Says Liz. That's because it's gone. I'm trying to get it back for you. It's crashed on me completely. I can't do anything at the moment, which is highly annoying. But let's just carry on the conversation. Let me know so far. You know what? What else? What else are you thinking about using it for? Ask me any questions about potential use cases and i will help you to uh you know see whether uh, whether i've already done it or whether it's possible i'm going to give you a steer on that okay well slowly uh, google is coming back google chrome is coming back to me but it's still waiting to open uh highly annoying i know Okay, so I can still see your chat on my laptop. So if you've got any questions so far, what we're going to come on to next, if I can get it working, is the tax questions. That's a really good one. And this was a real life situation. One of my team members came down and I had a chat with him uh, last week. And he said, oh, yeah, he was just giving me an update on one of our clients. So we're helping with a property incorporation. And he said to me, yeah, uh, well, this is going on. I was waiting for tax wise which is the helpline that we use, the Corona Eye Tax Wise, to come back to me with the legislation reference where the stamp duty relief is contained for when you're transferring property from beneficial owner from the same beneficial ownership to from 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 one owner to another, but where the beneficial ownership is the same, and therefore you can claim the stamp duty relief. I said, well, why don't we ask ChatGPT? So we got onto ChatGPT and we asked it the question to say, 
I mean, I kind of had a, a vague idea that it was within Schedule 15, Finance Act 2003. You know, some of my tax brain is still in there somewhere. And so we asked ChatGPT that there is a stamp duty relief which applies when the beneficial owners of the buyer and the seller are the same. Can you point us to the legislation reference where this is contained? And amazingly, it gave us the right answer, which is fantastic. And Rakesh, my team member, said, oh, that, that it kind of blew his mind. And then he said, oh, well, is there, can we ask it to find the reference within HMRC manuals as well? So we asked it and it gave us the, the reference from the HMRC manuals. And then the solicitors were asking us, well, you know, where, how do we, where do we put that in the stamp duty forms? So we asked ChatGPT and said, you know, we, Actually, the statute already said that you need to come, you need to claim this relief on the SDLT form in the right place. So we asked, okay, so where do we need to? Which section of the form do we need to complete? It's a question nine or something. When I get my screen back, I'll show you this actual transcript. And then it said, you know, put the right code in to claim this relief. Now it didn't tell us the code, so we just went back to it and said, uh, can you can can we actually can you actually tell me what the code is that I need to enter? And it came up with a code which was number thirty three. So it's phenomenal what access it has and how quickly you can get answers these days. Obviously, you need to have you know knowledge, kind of high level knowledge that what it's sprouting out to you is kind of correct, um, and you can rely on it and you can you know double check it and reference it if you wanted to. But it just gives you that uh, quick route into what you need, and then you can ask it to. Uh, give you the actual legislation reference or even the link to the site where you can go and check it out and it can do that for you now as well. So apologies, this uh, it's not playing ball. It's just being very, very slow. I'm going to try once again to present. Maybe if I, because uh, my stream yard is just, it's just frozen. It's just completely frozen on me. Let me try the old school control alt delete, right? Control alt delete, task manager, Let's get task manager on, on to find out who is consuming the resources of my CPU. Lo and behold, it's that uh, same culprit, Google Chrome. Let's end Google Chrome. Okay, so we've ended Google Chrome, and I seem to be back. I'm back. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Let me know. I'm going to end all these tasks these Google Chrome tasks that seem to be messing around my computer. Who, what do you, what uh, what browser do you use? Let me know in the comments, what browser you use, which one you find to be the most stable. Am I back? Disappeared on stable. Okay, right. So Chrome is now closed. Clear. I need to. I still need Chrome, don't I? Because I need to. That's the only way I can show you ChatGPT because that's where everything is locked. So I'm going to try one more time. I've opened up Chrome again. Uh, Chad Tim says I always stick to Chrome. Not a fan of MS Edge, Chrome, but also have uh, Safari open using Edge now. Oh yeah, Jill. You know what? You're right. And I think I might do as well. Okay, okay, it's coming back, it's coming back. Bear with me. If you're still here, hang around because lo and behold, it's working. So we were, where were we? We were on the dentist niche, weren't we? So let's let's quickly go back to that and I'll show you how it created the one page website. Hopefully it's loading. Uh, it wasn't that one, was it? Was it that one? No, I think it was dentist niche and website, this one here, which we were going through. So where were we? We were in the middle. I'll quickly go through this. So essentially it, uh, we were in the one-liner, gave us a one-liner, gave us the problem, the money headache, that's what we went through, didn't we? And we converted it into British English, more informal tone. The next section was all about the, the solution, our solution, so how we are tailored to you, no more tax tangles, freeing up your time. And I'm saying carry on, carry on to the next section, sounds good. And then it gave us a dental finance blueprint, making sense of finances, shouldn't be like pulling teeth. So here's our straightforward plan. And it comes up with a plan. So this is all the stuff that you can then put in your one-page website. Um, 
It's done it again. It's done it again. Okay, I'm going to try one more time to let's go off to the dark side and try Microsoft Edge and see if that works. Although I don't think I'm logged in. That is the only problem. I'm not logged into ChatGPT on uh, on Edge. So I might have to log in to that and have to remember what my login is. Um, let's see if that works because Groom is Chrome has crashed on me again. What do you use? Did anyone else move to Edge? Were you on Were you on uh, Chrome before? What were the reasons that you moved to Chrome? Okay, let me just quickly find my Gmail password from my last pass accounts. Again, something else, all these tech things that we use these days do make our life easier. Uh, most of the time <laughs> when they're not uh, being annoying, like now. Do you use LastPass? So where is my, what is my password? Okay, that's what it was. Hopefully it's still the same. Have I frozen on you? Or can you see the screen? Is it just the screen that's frozen? Okay, now it wants to... Yes, it is me trying to log in because it's the first time I have logged in via Microsoft Edge. So it's asking me to do the two-step authentication. We're just doing that. So hopefully it's going to let me in. Okay, it's let me in. Is it going to work? Uh, let's go to ChatGPT. Firefox is better than Edge, says someone. Okay, has it saved all my chats? Yes, it has. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna remove that stream. I'm gonna get rid of Chrome. Chrome, see you later. And I'm gonna now present and share with you Microsoft Edge screen. Let's see if that works. Okay. Right, okay, we are back now. Let's move on. Okay, so you can you can see you see you saw what it did did for the you saw what it did for the website. Now let's come on to something else. Let's come on to the tax uh, tax 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 stamp duty exemption. So I'll show you and I'll I'll share a whole a link to all these chats. Right. So this is a, this has happened in real time. Okay. Um, it was this, right? So let me show you what happened. So last week, I put this prompt into ChatGPT. I said, you are a, again, give it a roll. You are a stamp duty expert in the UK because we were looking for an answer for stamp duty. What is the legislation reference that pertains to transfers of property between a partnership and a company with the same beneficial owners on both sides resulting in nil stamp duty payable? So we knew this was the end result. We knew this is what happens. We just forgotten the legislation reference. It says, I'm not a lawyer, but as of my last update in September 21, the, the legislation that you may be referring to is Schedule 15 Finance Act 2003. And I kind of knew that, but I wanted to test it. And it did come up with it. And it said it provides relief for transactions that involve cooperation of a partnership, da, da, da. One of the main conditions, yeah, well, these are the conditions. So sometimes it's really useful to rack your brains on some items that may have been forgotten about in your memory as well. I mean, I'm a CTA, but it's been a while since I did my tax exam. So we can't remember everything. We can't remember every single legislation reference. So it's a good, it's a good, it's a really good way of actually prompts you sometimes as to actually, you know, you need to remember this. You need to, you need to be aware of this. And it does that for you. So can you find the reference in HMRC's manuals and send me a link? It says, and it said, I can't access the current web yet because that was turned off. Unfortunately, because of the legal issues that I told Go on again, go on again. You know what? To make it up to you, what I will do is I will do another session. I will record it. And if you comment below, I will make sure 
that I find a way of letting you know. So comment below right now that if you want me to let you know when I've done a recording of this and put it out there. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> you can feel my stress, can't you? Normally I don't get stressed out, but things like this are really stressing me out. Uh, Dino, just getting good. Okay, so let's get back to it quickly. Um, where were we? So I asked it for a legislation from reference from HMRC's manuals. It said, it doesn't know, but this is what you can do to find the reference. Go to your preferred search engine. Definitely not Google Chrome, eh? <laughs> Type HMRC SDLT manual, schedule 15. Clever. This should direct you to the relevant section of HMRC's SDLT manual, which will provide detailed guidance on the relief available for transfers of property in relation to partnerships. Blah, blah, blah. Um, always a good idea to consult with a tax professional. And then I asked, which section does the relief fall under within the stamp duty forms that are required to be completed for this type of transfer? So solicitors, as you might know, they're a bit lazy. They, you know, they don't, don't want to get involved with anything to do with tax, even though stamp duty is well within their remit. So they always ask us, where do we put this in the stamp duty forms? We don't do stamp duty forms. You do. You should know it. But anyway, we asked ChatGPT, do you know where to put this in the forms? And it came back with, amazingly, Property Transactions UK involve uh, the SDLT1 form. If the transaction involves a claim for relief, as it might be in the case of this transfer, the relevant relief code will need to be entered in the appropriate section of the form, right? As of my last update, if you're claiming a relief under Schedule 15 for a transfer related to the incorporation of a partnership, you would enter the relevant relief code in question nine of the SDLT form. Fantastic. Great stuff. We can go back, tell the client, tell your solicitor, go to question nine. Just make sure we check the form and see if it's still the same. Usually these forms don't really change much, but you can double check, obviously, by just getting a copy of SDLT1, which is easy to do by tapping into Google. Keep in mind, there yeah, must have changed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, it mentions this relevant relief code, but it didn't tell me what that relief code was. So I went back to it and said, what is the relevant relief code for this type of transfer? Amazing, right? It came up with <laughs> the relevant relief code for a transaction involving the incorporation of a partnership under Schedule 15, Finance Act 2003, is 32 on the SDLT form. How brilliant is that? How amazing is that? Okay, obviously, things change over time, and it puts this caveat in, no problem at all. So let me show you something else, which might blow your mind. Um, writing emails to clients about, for example, let's uh, let's look at this. So here's another one. Here's another uh, idea I had around entrepreneur's relief. So you've got a client, they've got loads of cash in the account, and you're, you know, they're worried, you're a bit worried. Will I will I be able to get entrepreneur's relief on this or not? So I ask it a question directly. You are an expert tax advisor in the UK. Answer the below query and point me to the references that you have used. I appreciate it's two o'clock nearly, but we've had uh, technical difficulties. So I'm happy to hang around for a bit if you are, if you can still see and hear me okay and you want me to carry on, uh, then let me know. Let me know that you're okay for me to carry on or whether you'd like me to stop uh, because you've got a lunch break to attend to. Uh, if so, no worries, we can call it a day and uh, do it another time. But if you want me to carry on, then let me know as well in the comments. And uh, if there's enough interest, I will do so. I don't have another meeting until 2.15, so I could go on until 2.14. If that works with you, let me know in the chat box. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, don't worry. This this is on YouTube, so you can always go back to YouTube and watch this recording. Okay, for you, Danny, because you're telling me to carry on, I will carry on. Okay, so what I did was I gave it a role. You're an expert tax advisor in the UK. Answer the below query for me and point me to the references that you have used. So I said, I have a client that has 1 million cash in his company, turnover of 5 million. I am concerned that he may not qualify for BADR, the new entrepreneur's relief, on sale of his business to reduce his capital gains tax to 10%. Can you provide me with an analysis of the arguments that HMRC could use to disallow the claim for BADR and conversely, what the client could do to mitigate the risk of the relief not being applied? It says, I'm not an actual tax advisor, but I can provide some general insights based on UK tax rules as of my last update. It's always important to consult an advisor, blah, blah, blah. Here's a general overview regarding the business asset disposal relief, formerly entrepreneur's relief. Arguments HMRC could use to disallow the claim for better, right? And it's gone through all these things. The main one is the trading company requirement, right? Where you've got large uh, cash balances. Having 1 million in cash could be seen as a significant non-trading activity, especially if it's not necessary for the running of the company. That's the, that's the kind of key risk area. But then, better than that, it doesn't give you problems. It gives you solutions as well. What the client could do to mitigate the risk of bad air not being applied. Reinvest, it gives you some ideas here. 
and you could go back to the client with this. Reinvest the cash. If it's not required for working capital, consider investing it back into the business, perhaps in assets or activities and can clearly categorize as, as trading activities. Evidence of trading purpose. Maintain the 5% threshold. Of course, that's all blah, blah, yeah, usual. But these ones are really good because they allow you as well to then, if you know my, I follow my nine step framework for pricing one off projects. I've done this in the past where I have actually quoted a one off fee for essentially giving clients some comfort and taking the risk away of him having lots of cash in the account and going for a sale and being worried that he's not going to get it. It wasn't much work on our side, but it was just coming up with the arguments and the statements and the justifications for having the cash on the balance sheet and being there in you know, to be able to defend him against HMRC should they raise an inquiry. They never did, but we still got a sizable fee in return because we got took the, the risk away, and that is key. Uh, so it then gives you the references as to what to go to, blah, blah, blah. It says, yeah, it's essential to uh, know that it, its knowledge goes up to 2021. Then I said it to it, this is great. Can you draft me an email to send to my client explaining the above in layman terms? So we've used it for research to begin with. We've given it a problem. It started to think through the solutions. It's, it's given you the potential arguments. It's given you the potential issues, again, that you may not have thought of. Now I want it to convert all of that into an email for the client. And it does exactly that. Dear client, hope it finds you well. Wanted to discuss the potential doubts and implications surrounding the sale of your business, particularly concerning BADA, which, if applicable, could reduce the capital gains tax rate to 10%. Can you hear me? Am I still there? I seem to have frozen. I can't hear. If you can, keep keep comments coming, because if you if if as soon as you hear that I can't that you can't hear me, let me know in the comments because I can pick that up on my laptop and then stop talking because otherwise I'll be talking and you're not hearing me. So it then creates me an email for that. Um uh, which is uh, which is great uh, in simple terms. You know what is better? Oh, go away, Chrome thingy. <laughs> oh, I pressed the wrong button. I'm not used to using Chrome. Uh, so it says, "What is better? Why you might not qualify? Here are some reasons. How can we improve our chances for the relief? I know this is a lot to digest. I'm here to guide you through every step. I aim is to position you, your business, in the best possible light for this relief and ensure you're informed throughout the process. Let's set up a meeting or call to discuss this further." OK, and it says, feel free to modify the email. I went back to it and said, the main risk area is a trading company definition due to the large cash holding. Can you redraft the email focusing just on this area and inviting the client in for a meeting to discuss further? Of course, here's a redraft of the email with a focus on the trading company definition due to the large cash holding. So it changes it all. Now, this is more of a kind of a uh, a mentioning of this is the risk and we need to get together to have a discussion on this and then this can then be an opportunity for you to go away and draft that proposal to get that big fee uh, by presenting the risk to the client so this is you know how it comes up with an email for you the key point trading versus non-trading status the million pound cash holding might be perceived by hmrc as a significant non-trading activity da -da -da. why this matters next steps uh, please let me know when you're available. I'll ensure we have all the necessary information prepared for our discussion. So this is fantastic, right? This is some of the things that I have done so far. I did one on property incorporation uh, as well. Uh, what did I ask it? I've got a client as a portfolio of 20 properties held in his and his wife's name and is asking whether he can transfer the properties to a company and save tax in the long run. I put these questions because I kind of know the answers, but I wanted to know how it came up with the answers. And it says, yes, absolutely. I can provide some guidance on this. It comes up with benefits of incorporation. This can be stuff. I will share a link to this chat with you as well. If you're a member, so you can access it from the Notion page. The last thing I want to show you is the game changer, the code interpreter.
Eek. Oh, and my mic gone. Oh, that's a bit annoying. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. No worries. Uh, I think, am I back now? No sound. All right. Okay. Well, I, I know I was just getting to the good bit, wasn't I? <laughs> so leave a comment below if you want to, you know, any other questions. Uh, I will just, I'll just finish it off. That was the best bit I was just allowed to show you. But unfortunately, the system is not playing ball. So I will do a recording. And if you're in the pack, you will get a copy of it. But hopefully you can see the, the table. So if you didn't kind of see what I did, I um, I got it to anonymize the data and then I got it to create a table with the top 10 customers by um, by customer uh, number, by, by customer, right? So I'll give you a copy of this. What else? I'm going to show you one more thing if it's going to play ball. This is something that uh, my one of my team members sent to me for use. Um, I think it's uh, a, client, uh, a file showing cash balances information, uh, just bank bank transactions for a client. So I will say analyze. So the first thing you need you can do is just say analyze the above file, and it will go away and it will start to analyze the file for you. It will tell you what it is, um, and inspect, inspect the structure. And what I want it to do is to create a graph. So this is the last thing I'm going to show you because the, we can't really rely on this data, uh, this uh, technical glitches at the moment. But um, what I'm going to do is ask it to create a chart showing cash balances month by month. And hopefully that will be enough to kind of give you those, uh, you know, the, the light bulb moment kind of going off in your head as to what you can do with it. So at the moment, it's just going through and analyzing the file. Uh, it's cleaning the data to extract the actual transaction records and things like that. Um, and I will show you if, okay, so it's got, it's telling me what it is. Da, da, da. Let's say um, create a chart showing, showing cash balances by months. Okay, right, let's see what it does. So what it needs to do, it just tells you, what it, you know, this is annoying. Sometimes it's annoying. What you can do is say, do this, but I don't want to hear your commentary. So you can actually turn off the whole commentary bit. So, but if you like to hear and see what it's doing, it's useful to know, okay, well, this is what it's doing. This is how the program is working, right? So it's going away. It's processing the data and processing a lot of data. Um, it's made an error. It's, the good thing about ChatGPT, unlike potentially some team members who only seem to be problem givers rather than problem solvers, is that if it comes up with a problem, it will attempt to correct that problem itself. So it is now finding problems, finding errors within the spreadsheet and is correcting itself. And then it will do a cleanup of that data uh, until it gets to what it needs to in order to be able to give you what you want. So it's found one error and try to fix it. It still hasn't been able to create what I wanted. So it's found on trying to find another solution, another breakthrough for it. It does find it eventually. But the solution here is obviously when you are there, it's much easier if you give it a CSV file with nicely laid out columns. So just get rid of all the stuff that you get from zero QuickBooks from the top, you know, all the headings and that kind of stuff. So it's just columns with data. So just have the 
the metadata at the top as to what the column label is, and then all the, the rows underneath with just the data, rather than all these blank lines, which it doesn't really like, because it has to go in and it has to um, fix it, which is what it's doing at the moment. So it's saying there seems to be an issue with referencing the columns due to the naming structure. So it's taking a different approach. It's restructuring the data frame to have more straightforward column names. With the updated columns, we can then proceed with the analysis. I'm going to give it one more opportunity to do it. And if it can't do it, I'm just going to switch to the one that I did yesterday where it gave me the nice graph immediately. But hopefully, um, this is, oh, there's still an issue. Uh, okay, this, it's troubleshooting. It's troubleshooting again. I'm going to get, <laughs> sometimes you've got to be patient. But the beauty of this is that it then, it, it shows you what you need to do in order not to have to go through this process where it's having to correct the data itself and give it what it needs from the outset in terms of you don't have to do much to it. It just means clearing out empty cells, empty columns from or empty rows rather from the top to give it a pure CSV file. I didn't give it a CSV file. I gave it an Excel file. So again, Excel files are much more difficult for it to deal with rather than a CSV file. Okay. So now it's manually inspecting each column. Okay. Well, I think it's taking a bit too long. Um, but what actually happened when I did this yesterday, I don't think it took this long, but it basically did this, right? Um, it gave me a, let's see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it. But it gave me something like uh, this, which I will show you right now before we close the session for today. So if I kind of um, move this across, can you see that? That's what it gave me. Um, and I copied this to my colleague. So, okay, we'll call it a day there. We've got one meeting to go to. Hopefully in between all the technical glitches, apologize for that, but I'll get a, another uh, session arranged or I'll get some recordings for you. But in summary, this is a game changer. Start using it because the skill is in the prompting. Get good at prompt engineering, get good at telling the AI what you want it to do, and it can absolutely save you so much time and allow you to do so much for very at very little time and at very little cost. As you can see here, some of the stuff that it can do, we pay sometimes hundreds of pounds a month to for accounting software to do just that. It can do it for next to nothing um, and a whole lot more too. Thank you for your patience and hopefully I'll see you on the next uh, episode. Comment below with any other ideas, any other questions you have, any other topics that you want me to cover on this particular subject matter and uh, I will be in touch with you very soon. Take care, bye for now.